Everyone, thank you for um, coming to fellows meeting on a very dreary morning. Uh, I think it will be worthwhile. Um, so, Kay Hogan Smith from the UAD Worcester Hall Library will be talking to us today about searching the literature. Um, and so, I have never personally met her before this morning, but I've sent um, all of my PhD students to meet with her um, because it's really very helpful to talk to a librarian about how to find the literature you're looking for. Thank you. Okay, good morning everybody. Good morning. Um, as I said, I'm Okay Smith. I'm at UAD Lister Hill Library. I've been there for 23 years now. 
And um, I want to also recognize Jill Deaver, my colleague from UAB Street Hill Library uh, here in the audience. She's uh, actually the liaison for the libraries to the School of Medicine. And um, so as, as noted, we're, um, uh, we're going to talk about searching the literature and the library resources and the services. I understand that <laughs> hear me. Um, I understand that um, the, uh, there are some folks from Tulane uh, coming in on this. So um, most of the resources and services that I'm going to talk about are kind of universal. So um, uh, they should be available at Tulane as well, although you know, there may be some slight differences in the way they access them. So just uh, be aware of that, Tulane folks. And let's see, the next one. Our object, my objectives for today um, are that we'll, uh, we'll be talking about uh, finding books and, and um, uh, clinical resources for background information for your research. Um, and then we'll talk about, you know, using databases to find uh, research articles to um, support your research, um, uh, including, you know, doing effective um, uh, searches and advanced techniques and um, getting full text, whether you're on campus or off. And most importantly, knowing, uh, you know, how to get, get to us for help if you need it, okay? So to start off, with, uh, these are, um, this is just a uh, slide that has, um, that links to our guides. There are, there are several different library guides that we've produced on um, all different kinds of um, resources and topics and, um, you know, all, all different kinds of things. So in just about all the resources that I'm going to cover today, there's a guide for it. And uh, you can find information there. Also, um, uh, as far as Tulane is concerned, they have um, these uh, same types of library guides at their health sciences library. So be sure to check those out. So what are some of the services uh, supporting? And one of the main things I want you to remember is, you know, if you don't remember anything else, is, you know, uh, remember this Ask a Librarian feature because you can um, you can um, get access to you know your library help uh, almost around the clock. Even if we're you know our chat ser services um, generally only open until six o'clock at night. However, uh, you can email us and we're, we're generally answer you within a few hours. You know even if it's in the middle of the night, you know the next morning we'll be there. We'll, we'll answer you. And then you can set up one-on-one um, -on -one consultations. I've done numerous. Um, one-on-one uh, -on -one, um, uh, meetings with people to help them, you know, kind of figure out, you know, how to get, um, how to set up their search strategy, which databases to use, that kind of thing. So be, just, you know, take advantage of those services. Um, and then we do training for individuals, you know, and groups um, on, you know, again, advanced, these kind of advanced searching techniques uh, using EndNote or bibliographic citation management software programs. Um, uh, you know, working with the NIH uh, public access policy um, for if you go for like NIH grants, um, uh, using some really um, cool uh, Mayan CBI features within PubMed um, that help you create biosketches for um, for grants for um, to uh, use that my bibliography my bibliography feature to um, uh, keep up with that uh, you know uh, public access compliance uh, policy. And um, and then we can do this, you know, either in person or online. I've done it, you know, virtually by go to meeting. Um, and there are some other services that we make available as well. So um, anyway, those are some services we offer. <laughs> okay, um, so a lot of people. I'm kind of starting at the end here uh, with uh, finding full text articles because um, that's what a lot of people, you know, really really concerned about getting access to the full text. Um, so what the main thing you want to do is. is Start with the library's websites, okay? And um, because even if it's a free service like PubMed, which is available through you know the government, the federal government, so you can get to it anywhere by PubMed.gov. What you want to do is go through the library's site to get to it, because that allows you to go through the proxy server on campus, and so you can authenticate to get to that full text access, okay? And it makes it easier. So. Um, so what you do is, like, this is a, a screenshot of a record in PubMed in the abstract view, and you'll see over to the uh, right-hand side, there's a UAB article linker button, and you click on that button and um, to get to the full text, and then you get this other screen, and it um, has little options that say, you know, you can get this by uh, Marianne Liebert online, you can get it by, you know, Elsevier, whatever the vendor is, 
but you click on that article link and it pulls up the full text. Or, or actually, if you're off campus, it'll give you the um, this little uh, pop-up button that says, what's your Blazor ID and password? Okay, and then you get put that in and there it is. Okay, but just remember to always go through the library's website. Now, one thing I should warn you about is that we're, the libraries are kind of in the process of, the uh, libraries here at UAB are in the process of um, kind of merging some of their services and things. Um, uh, we're, um, and so we're moving to a platform now where, as before, you always had to search like the, the Health Sciences Library, Lister Hill Library uh, catalog and, and resources um, using our website. And then you had to go to Stern Library if you wanted to use some of their, their um, find some resources in their catalog um, for whatever reason um, for um, interdisciplinary work or whatever. Now this platform will allow you to search those, okay, at the same time. So it makes sense. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I had some friends trying to Skype in from elsewhere and they're having trouble seeing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, they asked if you're logged in to the remote access. <laughs> sorry. I'm going to let you do that. They didn't want to miss it. I'm sorry. Uh, we are sharing your screen. Um, you know, or, uh, is Jim Brian to say? Brian is not. So we're using a different GoTo meeting, we're using Dr. Sags, and I sent it to one Tulane student that I had. Uh, Ryan didn't give me the full list of Tulane students. So if it's a Tulane student, it's that one of the other students, uh, one of the UAB students, just not here, but if there's no way, I can just email them the stuff later or something. Oh, okay, yeah, we're recording it as well. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I'll have a lot of communication. Okay. So, okay, Linda, the question was about somebody was having trouble um, accessing uh, remotely. I've got a chat question over here. Sorry. So, um, um, anyway, we'll, we'll try to get that recording to you. Sorry about that. Okay, so anyway, we're moving to this new platform for the, for the libraries that allow you to do this kind of federated search of the both catalogs and um, some of the databases for the, for the articles. Um, now, uh, so uh, the thing is, you know, some of the, um, uh, the ways I show you to do may look a little different by the end of the summer. <laughs> so um, just be aware of that. It's kind of a heads up. Um, this is kind of the nature of um, finding information in the 21st century. Once you get used to using a resource, it changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. So, uh, but we hope it'll be better, and, and uh, we're certainly working to make it so. So, let's see, where's my, here it is. Okay, sometimes, occasionally, you might uh, come across um, a link to uh, full text when you, when you click on that article link where it says it's not, um, we don't have a subscription to it. Uh, unfortunately, there's some that we don't have subscriptions to. So uh, what I usually do is first suggest that people uh, try the Google Scholar link um, and under option one here in the in the screen, um, because a lot of times it'll it'll be um, it'll, somebody will have posted it free online. Um, and, but if not, uh, be sure to make um, take advantage of that interlibrary loan uh, service under option two, and uh, it's it's free to you. Um, it's very quick. It's usually within a day or two, and they'll send you the PDF. Okay, so um, that's a, that's a good service to keep in mind. That's uh, available to you as UAB affiliates, and I'm sure Tulane also has that as well. This is um, you know other routes you know to full text you can uh, keep up with uh, the Google Scholar. Um, I've had some uh, some links to our lit library guides on Google Scholar here because you can go into Google Scholar. Um, and set up your preferences so that it links to the Lister Hill Library um, uh, resources. Um, and you have to, if you, if you don't set it up, it kind of defaults to go into Sturm's resources. So uh, you, have to, you have to do that. It's not hard. You just kind of have to tell it, you know, I want Lister Hill Library resources. So uh, that guide will show you how to do that. Um, you can also do it through EndNote, find full text, um, that feature in EndNote. And then using the browsing app that's available to you as well. A lot of people find that very useful um, to use on your mobile app. Okay. So any questions about finding full text? 
All right. So finding the right information for your work um, and getting started. Um, so first thing when you um, when you want to get started, uh, all right. So you're looking into something that you're not that familiar with. You need some background information. What you're going to want to start with probably are, are books or you know, either electronic or print, whatever. So, um, so again, what you want to do is start with the website and then go into the catalog. All right, to find find the books. Or um, there's also a link to uh, eBooks um, either on the left hand sidebar or uh, in the ribbon at the top. Uh, or actually the tabs around in the middle there. And so um, this has it highlighted right here. So you, you go in there and you search for, for books on a particular topic. And in the ebooks, when you when you search, you know, that ebooks uh, link, uh, so this is uh, some results from a search for translational medicine, and come up with all these different ebooks that are available, and you click on the view link and it, and it links you to the full text. So it's pretty easy to use. So another resource that's really important for you to uh, be aware of that we have available to you through the UAB Hospital is um, up to date, and so you'll really want to um, take advantage of that. Um, and um, this provides, you know, uh, really good um, clinical summaries, evidence-based clinical summaries um, for clinical questions um, rapidly. So um, you'll want to uh, take advantage of that. And also, you have, you have a, a mobile app for that that you can download. Um, you do have to um, you know, register on campus at first and then kind of um, re-authenticate yourself every uh, 90 days or something like that. Um, however, you don't, um, there's a way to get, get to do that without having to come back on campus to do it. If you, um, I'll show you our FAQs in a minute. that. Um, uh, to show you how to do that, but it's, it's pretty easy to. Okay, so once you've found all this background information, you know, in the, in the books, then you want to uh, search the databases for articles on the topic, all right? And um, there, you know, the first thing you have to do, okay, um, when, you're, when you're starting to think about what your, your, your topic, um, you want to set up a, a good answerable question. <laughs> And um, the way I, you know, what I've seen people do a lot is they kind of start out with too general a question and then they plug it into, you know, you know Google Scholar or PubMed or whatever, and they're kind of overwhelmed with the number of results. And so what you want to do is really think about, um, uh, you know, um, getting your topic as focused as it, it, it's appropriate and um, it can be, okay? So for, you know, so for example, if you're looking at, um, you're, you're trying to find, um, uh, find the evidence for um, uh, with condom use um, um, reducing HIV transmission, uh, what's the evidence in that? Well, that's kind of a general question. What if you thought, thought about what kind of particular population are you looking at to try to refine your, your, your question a little bit? maybe focusing on men who have sex with men or something like that to try to focus, just, just think about, you know, focusing your, 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 your question. And, um, and then what you have to do is break your question, uh, your question into its uh, basic concepts. So in that example, if we're looking at, um, um, you know, in men who have sex with men, does condom use um, reduce um, HIV transmission? So my basic concepts there would be the population, men who have sex with men, the intervention, condom use, and the third one would be um, HIV transmission, right? So you've got, you've got your concepts. And then you, use, uh, you, you search um, the concepts separately and then uh, combine the results together using the, and, the Boolean AND operator, okay? So it's kind of the basic steps. Um, now, um, before you do that, you have to actually identify the databases <laughs> that you want to find. So, um, in our in our website, in its current iteration, we've um, uh, we've kind of carved out some of the, the major um, research databases for biomedical literature um, on the the central part of the, the website. So, um, there's there's a link for PubMed Central, which is Nursing and Allied Health. Um, again, the e-books and e-journals. 
uh, Scopus, uh, Google Scholar, and Embase, and those are all the, the, the heavy hitters that we, we have. But we have several others under our databases link. And again, if you have trouble, you know, deciding your, uh, which databases maybe you should you should try, uh, please ask a librarian at uh, Lister Hill Library, um, so that we can we can help you identify some good resources. Um, you can go when you click on our database uh, link. Uh, page it'll give you this long list of alphabetical list of, of databases and but they there's a way to uh, there's a little pull down menu at the top or you can select a category a top a topical category to look for so you can kind of combine um, hone in on some uh, databases that way that are relevant to your topic area Okay, but PubMed is usually the place where I do my start <laughs> for most of my um, uh, literature reviews, and a lot of people do. Um, it's um, it's one of the you know kind of the gold standard um, databases for biomedical literature produced by the National Library of Medicine, and um, uh, it's um, it's sometimes um, confused with you know they're they're people use the term PubMed and Medline interchangeably, however, they're, so, they're somewhat different. PubMed is the interface that's used to search Medline. There are other interfaces that are out there to search Medline database. Um, you may have been in institutions where they offered Ovid, Ovid um, interface to uh, search Medline. Um, and, um, but here we use, we use PubMed. And um, it has, uh, it includes these, um, uh, the, the Medline database, which is all the re references that have been um, indexed, um, fully indexed, including uh, the MESH, the medical subject heading, uh, controlled vocabulary terms assigned to them. And searching with those uh, MESH terms can really help you focus, target your, your search, along with um, uh, keyword searching for um, your topic as well. Um, we usually um, recommend that you do both because um, it, it, there's a delay in uh, indexing the, the references, uh, you know, a few months. And um, the, the newer references that are kind of automatically added to PubMed by the publishers, um, uh, they won't have those mesh terms assigned. So if you just search using the mesh terms, you're going to miss those really, really new references that may be relevant to your topic. So you do a combination of both. Um, subject heading search and, and keyword searching. And um, so this is kind of a, another um, screenshot of a, a record in PubMed and it has a link down at the bottom to the mesh terms where they pop up. <coughs> this has some uh, PubMed searching techniques for you on this screen. Also, um, I've given you some handouts that have some, some kind of advanced searching techniques as well. And um, I'm going to actually demonstrate for you. Bear with me. What what you do that? I'm curious to hear from mm -hmm. the audience how many people have used ever have ever used PubMed. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty much everyone, right? Uh huh. Y'all are experts? <laughs> no? Well, I tell you, we're, we're all learning, you know. The more you do it, the more you learn, you know. So, I so, mean, so you, as you show that, what are the practical tips that you can show since you have an audience that has used something? Okay. Well, um, so, like I said, I went through the library website to get to PubMed, first of all, we were able to do that, okay, and um, to get to that full text. Um, and this is the, the home screen and everything. Um, so, uh, you know, you can, what you can do, you know, I, uh, what I like to do is show people kind of the differences in doing just a, like a basic search and an advanced search, you know, just so you know how to do it, all right? Um, so, if I did, uh, for my example today, I wanted to do, um, uh, find articles on um, the treatment of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So, if I just type that in the basic search screen here, 
and you can see it does um, has some uh, automatic um, completion terms here. So if I just put in my keywords, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease treatment, um, and it has a, a mapping feature which kind of takes what I put in and maps to the, um, the mesh um, terms for the, the keywords that I put in. Um, however, I want to show you, um, scroll down a little bit here on the right hand side, you can see there's a little box for search details and if I click on see more under that, um, it'll tell you how it translated it, but especially in this part, in the blue part where it has the translations, you can see where it divided by my search into its basic concepts, right? So it's looking at non-alcoholic fat, the condition, non-alcoholic fat, fatty liver disease, and then um, the treatment um, concept. And in the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, it mapped to that mesh term, okay? And, um, and then it added in, it ordered in together with that, the keywords for, um, for the phrase non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, and then the individual keywords all in the, all fields. And then it did the same thing with treatment. So that's a, it's a pretty good search, it's not bad. Um, so, uh, but what I like to do, I'm gonna go back. So we found, you know, some good, some good resources there. However, um, I'm kind of a control freak and I like to do things, um, you know, um, I like to really control where you know, it's pulling the keywords from and, and things like that. So, um, so what I want to do is kind of show you how to do a, um, an iterative search using uh, the Mesh database and the Advanced Search Builder. And so I start with the Mesh database here on the, on the right hand side under More Resources. I do my non-alcoholic, oops, yes, I'm typing correctly, non-alcoholic, there it is. Here's my non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's, um, it's just in the, the SARS subject headings. All right, and it starts off with a description, and then it has some subheadings that can be attached to this. And one of those, if you'll notice, is therapy. So I can go ahead and, and connect to that concept to my, to my disease, my condition there. So I, I connect that, that to it, and then underneath that, I have the option where I can click this box that says restrict to mesh major topics. So I can make this term the, the main point of the articles I pull up, not just to mention, and I want to do that. So um, again, I'm kind of focusing my, my search, right? Um, and then you can scroll down and it gives you some of the uh, synonyms and stuff that are maybe entry terms, and then it gives you the hierarchy of, of terms as it appears um, in the mesh, um, uh, uh, mesh hierarchy. So um, since this uh, is at the bottom of the hierarchy, there are no more specific headings underneath that. Um, it's uh, it's a kind of a moot point, but if uh, there were more specific headings underneath this, um, PubMed would automatically include those, um, more, uh, those references indexed in the more specific terms as well, unless you tell it not to, okay? So just be aware of that, but we don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top. There's a PubMed search builder over in the uh, right-hand corner up in the uh, top, and I can click on Add to Search Builder, and it plugs that in, um, that mesh major topic with the therapy um, uh, subheading attached. And then under that is the button for Search PubMed. I click on that, and it'll run the search for me. All right, this is just the mesh search. Okay, so I've got about 800 now. All right. Now I'm going to show you the advanced search builder where I can add in my keywords, okay, because I still want to get those really new stuff, things that haven't been um, indexed yet. So I click on this advanced link at the top, and um, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see the history where I searched all the searches I've already run here. Um, and now I'm going to add in my keywords. So I go back to the builder. And over up, up where it says all fields, that pull down menu, I want to change that and I want to search just in the title or abstract. I really want to focus my keyword on that particular field. So what I'm going to do is look for the phrase non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So I could put that phrase in quotation marks, okay? This is a common way to force the search, any um, database or search engine to look for a phrase rather than individual words. Okay, wherever they may go. Oops, sorry. 
Um, so non-alcoholic fatty liver. I'll just, I'll just do non-alcoholic fatty liver. And then I'll click on add to his. Oops, no, I don't want to do that yet. In the next search field underneath that, I want to add that uh, treatment concept as a keyword. Is so that again, mm -hmm. for spelling as well. I'm sorry. Does that force spelling as well? It, it does, right? I mean, so like you would need non-alcoholic and non-dash alcoholic if you're using quotations. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna. It's just gonna pull. It's just gonna pull that. You're right. Out. So actually, I could. Um, I could do that. Let me do that. So instead of doing adding treatment, instead I'll just do. Um, I'll do that. Do non-alcoholic fatty liver. I'll add that. That's a good point. And then, um, and then I'm going to add in my keywords. <clears throat> so I'm going to change, change that to title or abstract. And now I'm going to do uh, treat. Um, we'll do treat with an asterisk. Asterisk is a truncation symbol, which allows you to look for any um, ending on that word. Treat, um, treating, treated, treatment, whatever. And then uh, I can just go ahead and or put an or in there and do uh, therapy for an end at, at the P and then an asterisk for therapy, therapeutic, therapies, plural, whatever. Add to the history. So now I'll go back down to my history here. Okay, I've got my, um, my mesh heading and uh, for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I've got the keywords for that um, that condition, and then the keywords for therapy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add these uh, in the, um, the the keyword concepts together, since my mesh heading um, uh, disease and, and treatment are together. So I'll go ahead and where it says Add to Builder under this um, history, I'll click on the Add by the um, the search string for non-alcoholic fatty liver in the keywords. And it'll automatically add it up to that builder. And then I'll go up to the, the uh, treat, treat or therapy and add that one. And then I've got that up in the builder and I just add that to the history. And now I'm ready to or my mesh term with my keywords, um, kind of my equivalent keywords. So I'll go down to the set number three in the history and add that with the mesh major topic and the, the last search I did with all the keywords together. And I changed that Boolean operator over on the left to an OR. Does that make sense? Does it treat an OR like a print? Is there an order of operation for Boolean operators in PubMed and does it treat an OR sort of like a parentheses? That is, if I put something and something else or something and something else, does it treat it as two separate clauses that are OR together? Yeah. That it like addresses first, or does it? You see, PubMed is, is not as particular, but I'm general. I generally do the ors first and then the ands. But um, it's <clears throat> PubMed's for get more forgiving than other databases are in that regard. Okay. There are some you have to really be careful. About. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm ready to search, and I'm searching, and I've got I got a bunch. However, I should I still have one more trick I want to show you. All right, I've got 4,000, almost 5,000 here. That's too many. Um, so we're we're looking for you know um, really the some really really good um, strong evidence for uh, these treatment interventions for this particular disease. So what I can do is uh, use a tool in um, PubMed called Clinical Queries, and um, what I like to do since I've done, done this kind of more complicated search here. Um, I could go directly to it, but in this case, I'm just going to copy my search string. So I go up to the, the search at the top, and I just kind of highlight all that, and I copy it, and I click on the PubMed logo at the left-hand sidebar here. And Clinical Queries is under this PubMed Tools um, column in the middle. So I click on that. <coughs> it pulls up that... that uh, uh, interface, and then I paste that search string into that search field and click on search, and now I have 163 uh, systematic reviews if I want to just put, look at systematic reviews. <coughs> so I can just click on this. 
Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Another thing that you want to do in PubMed um, is probably change the, the, uh, the format at the top where it says it kind of defaults to the summary. I like to change it to the abstract view so that you don't have to go back and forth. You can just kind of scroll through. And um, also that allows you to see, you know, click on the article linker right there as you can look at the full text. So you see these first ones here in the reference list, they don't have mesh headings attached because they're not, they're not fully indexed yet, okay? And you'll probably have to scroll down a ways before you get to the ones that are, um, that, are full, that have the mesh terms. But you can, you know, um, you can just click in the boxes over here by the, by the citations, you go up back up to the top where it says send to, that pull, pull down menu, and um, you can, um, you know, either save it to a file, uh, send it to your citation manager, save it to clip, uh, temporarily in a clipboard, you can email it to yourself. Um, if you have a MyNCBI account, which I would really encourage you to do, um, you can save it to in a permanent collection. You know, in your MyNCBI account, your little purple <laughs> cubby. Um, my bibliography, that's that, uh, if, you're, if it's your citations that you're keeping track of for um, public access compliance and things like that, you'll um, want to save it in that. So, but MyNCBI is, is a really good tool to use. And um, you can also set up your preferences so that, you know, it automatically formats it to your results in abstract view and highlights your keywords that you search and stuff like that. So you can do a lot of really good things with my NCBI. So if you don't have an account with them, I would really encourage you to do that. So I kind of went through a lot there. Does anybody have any questions about PubMed? I really want you to get good with PubMed. But again, if you haven't, if you run into trouble, please, you know, let us know. We're, we, can, we can help you with this. Um, this, is, uh, this is something the librarians do on a daily basis. So, you know, we, we've done this a lot. So when you click the PubMed logo, and it took you to this, mm -hmm. um, what is it excluding from the original search that was like 5,000 entries? Uh, what are these? Okay, so these are systematic reviews. Okay. All right, so what I did was I went into, um, I clicked on that, um, I, placed, I went into clinical queries and pasted in my search there, and then it just, um, what it does, it, it's, it's, um, it's for evidence-based medicine. Uh, filter kind of thing. So you can just, you know, find uh, randomized controlled trials or systematic reviews, or it also has a medical genetics component too. But, um, but again, you know, if you're ever not sure, you can go back to your advanced link at the top and, you know, all your searches, remember, are still here in your history. So this is, it's just, it's just adding a systematic uh, review subset to my, um, to my original search. So hopefully, you know, this final set is, is a lot more targeted. It's a lot, you know, uh, uh, evidence-based um, resources that you're looking for, that kind of thing. And, um, yes, sir? Can you go back to the call? One of the things that they had problems with is actually go back to the, when you <laughs> search, when you search PubMed, mm -hmm. you know what you do. And then if you pick up the more resources, one of the data sets is PMC something. One of the drop you know, on top. Instead of PubMed. Oh, oh, up here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Some of those are PMC. Uh-huh. The PubMed Central. PubMed Central. Uh-huh. Sometimes when I search there, uh -huh. I have a difficulty finding the same reference in PubMed. Really? Are they linked together? Yeah. Interesting. Have you heard of that, too? What was that again? Could you search something in PMC? Yeah, let me try. Just yes, edit it. Okay. Let's try the same thing. Okay. How do you send, let's say, the first reference to your, to your uh, list of references? Well, you click on send to, um, and you can, you know, yeah, you can sit, again, you can email to yourself, you can save it, you can click on uh, clipboard, clipboard is a temporary 
saving point. And then collections is your permanent um, reference list in uh, my NCBI. So what's the advantage of doing PMC versus PubMed? Well, PubMed Central, that's, um, that's the uh, kind of uh, open access um, uh, repository from, um, uh, from NCBI that allow, you know, when, when you do, uh, when, a lot of a lot of resources are now being uh, a lot of articles are now being deposited in this open access repository. So it's it's more limited. Oh, yeah. it's Not just, everything. It's uh, just full text, right? It's, it's full text. It's yeah. Just the ones that have open yeah. source, open access full text. Yeah. I should be searching for KMC. Yeah, okay. I would. I would. I would search about that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, everything that you can find in um, that Central is also. In Right. It should be, yeah. I'm sorry, Linda. Um, I've got a question here. So, P yes, PubMed Central is more limited. It is uh, full text only. I've got chat questions. I'm trying to keep up with them. <laughs> Not doing very well. Yeah, I think you'd want to limit a search just to what is open access. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, You'd be missing someone. Yeah. I'd be wasting my time. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's continue. Let's... All right. So um, we'll get through a few more things before we have to go. So um, again, if you haven't um, set up a MyNCBI account, I would encourage you to do that. Um, and uh, one thing you can save your searches and and set up alerts and things like that as well. So um, it's really it's really useful to. Uh, to do this if you haven't already. And again, we have a guide on strictly on um, using PubMed. Uh, okay. All right, um, let me talk a little bit about Embase. Uh, Embase is another you know, major gold standard biomedical literature database, and we're really pleased to have it available at UAB now. Um, and um, it's really complementary to PubMed. So um, it, it, there's some overlap with PubMed, but it also covers a lot of the literature that PubMed does not cover. So, um, and especially in uh, countries outside North America, it's also really good for any kind of drug or device um, uh, research. So, if you're, you're, that's one of your topics you might really want to consider using Embase. So, um, so, and but again, it takes you know you can uh, you can also do kind of a quick search in the same way that we did. Um, with PubMed using that um, uh, that that um, basic search box, and it'll do some automatic mapping for you. Um, but you can um, uh, you can also do the the kind of iterative search that I uh, demonstrated in PubMed with um, using their controlled vocabulary terms um, combined with um, the keyword searching. And their controlled vocabulary terms is different from from the mesh. Unfortunately, it's called entry. So, uh, so it's a little bit different, but the, the process is pretty much the same. Um, and again, here's some search tips for, um, for using Embase. There's, uh, there's also some tips in your handout there. Um, and, um, you know, again, uh, you want to start with, you know, uh, separating your search into its basic concepts and searching them separately and then combining them, combining the results together. So that's the way I do it anyway. I see proximity indicators are available in mm -hmm. Embase. Yep. Uh, the syntax here is near forward slash n. The n stands for like the number of bytes or like the number of letters. I think it's number of words or something. Or number of words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. it's, so it's five would be pretty big. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't use that that much because I'm a little leery of it, but but yeah, you know, I have used it. But, yeah. Can you explain that a little bit more? So what does it mean by five words, like an example? Like so, five, so what, did, what did I say? Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, okay. So I, I told you about searching with um, uh, using a phrase, you know, forcing it with, with quotation marks. Okay. Um, so that would, you know, when you want to, uh, like, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or something like that. You could also do like you know um, 
non-alcoholic near near to liver or something like that just to make it close by. You just want them to be close proximity within the same sentence instead of like, you know, somewhere, you know, um, one one in one uh, paragraph and another in another paragraph or something like that. You know, does that make sense? That's kind of kind of what you're after there. But um, as I said, I don't really use it that much. So um, uh, if I have time, I'll, I'll go into Embase and, and show you how to uh, set up a search there. But um, be, be aware that uh, you can also uh, set up account, personal accounts as you do in PubMed in these other databases, including Embase. So you can set up your own account, uh, save your searches, your results, set up uh, email alerts, that kind of thing. Um, and again, we have a library guide on, on that as well. And again, we're there to help you as well. So, uh, one, a few more things before I um, uh, try to do, do any more demos. Um, Scopus is another really good resource. Um, it's, uh, it's really good for any kind of, uh, you know, interdisciplinary um, research you're doing because it's very comprehensive. It includes more than just uh, health sciences literature. Um, and um, uh, it includes also things like conference papers and things like that. So, uh, but a lot of times people use it to find out who's, uh, to follow kind of citation trails or find out how many times you've been cited or something like that. Um, so, um, so what I use it for a lot is if, you know, I'm having trouble with a topic or whatever and I'm finding, you know, I've got like one or, good, one or two really highly relevant citations. What I can do is, is plug that in the Scopus and see, okay, who cited that? And I can, um, I can follow that citation trail to find other highly, highly relevant citations, hopefully, um, that are more current. And also follow its citations as well. So um, again, these are some of the other reasons to, to use Scopus. And um, uh, again, you can find out more in our guide. And this is a, a this is very tiny. I'm sorry about this. This is a screenshot of a record in, in uh, Scopus. Um, Scopus is uh, you should know it's it's basically keyword searching only. It doesn't have a controlled vocabulary, although its keywords are kind of based on um, other controlled vocabulary such as uh, mesh and imagery. So um, so be aware of that. That's you, you're basically doing keyword searching and more about setting alerts and stuff like that. And that's our help. Let me see. Go back and see how much time I've got. Oh, I've got a few more minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see if I can have time to show you Embase here. So, so Embase is also carved out here in the middle of the, the website. So I click on that, that link and I'm going to click on Embase. All right, and I don't want to take their survey. Okay, so you can just use this quick search if you want to, you know, and um, um, try to see what they come up with. So I can do non-alcoholic, alcoholic, <laughs> I'm misspelling it. Yeah. There it is. Okay, so I just did, you know, non-alcoholic fatty liver and came up with about 29,000 references. Um, so um, what it did, it, um, you can see in the, um, in the history up in the top, what it did, it um, took my search and it mapped it to the, the, the control vocabulary term in Embase, which is again mtree. And that's just not call it fatty. It's, um, you can tell it's the entry heading because it has this uh, slash exp at the end. And then it also searched for the phrase non-alcoholic fatty liver, just as a keyword. Okay. And so it came up with quite a bit there. Um, you know, however, you can also do that kind of iterative uh, searching that we did before. And it's a little, <coughs> it's a little weird in base, but I'm going to try to show you how to do this. If, what you have to do is you have to browse the control vocabulary um, terms using this you know, browse pull down menu and click on mtree and then you uh, search that, uh, that control vocabulary um, database
I have a hard time spelling non-alcoholic for some reason. Non-alcoholic, there it is. <laughs> and click on Find Term. And there's the link. So I click on it. And um, there's the hierarchy of headings there for non-alcoholic fatty liver. Tells you about, you know, the symptoms, synonyms, excuse me, the dictionary head, the definition, things like that. And so I go back and I can um, click on uh, this Add to Query Builder. What is Explode versus Add Major Expression? Well, it had that little two selection boxes right there. Yes, I could. I should do that actually. The Explode is with is taking more specific headings, which um, it's really. Uh, there's not any underneath it, so. Oh, okay, so it will include, Explode will include. Explode will include whatever is underneath it. Sit sub to whatever. Yeah, thing yeah. Okay. So actually, yeah, I'm going to do that instead. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it a major focus and add it to the query builder. Let's do that. Okay. So now, got that. And um, I can go ahead in here and or in my, um, my phrase search. Non-alcoholic fatty liver. I'm putting it in in. Well, this is a single quotation mark in uh, in base. And to focus it on to um, the uh, Tyler abstract, um, what it is, it kind of follows the syntax. You have a um, a colon and then uh, ti comma ab to look at the Tyler abstract. Um, if you don't remember that, let me go ahead and search that first to show you. All right. Um, under the search tips in the main um, uh, at the top part of the um, history, if you click on that, um, it'll give you the fields, and you scroll down there, and you can see the field codes. That first one there to help gives you an example of how to set that up. Okay. Okay, so I've got this. I still want to get that treatment thing in there. So what I do is go back to the M tree. I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to do therapy. I cannot type. All right, there's therapy. And actually, this is um, kind of a subheading. Again, so there's my therapy heading, and I look in that, and you can see all the different types. So this is you definitely want to explode this because it's taking in all these different types of, of therapy. All right, so you don't want to do this a major major topic. All right, so I'm going to add this to the query builder now, and I'm going to orient my keywords now. So treat asterisk, colon, ti, comma, ab, or therapy, the root word for therapy, co um, asterisk, colon, ti, ab. Search it. And then I can take my um, uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver concept, uh, major term, um, or keywords, and the therapy concept, and I go to combine up in the upper right and just keep it at that AND operator, click on combine. And now I have 8,000 instead of 29,000, which is a lot better. Um, since I said there was some overlap with Medline, um, what you want to do is um, you can go to the sources um, filter over in the left and click on that little pull down menu. And there's a, it's hard to see here, but there's a Venn diagram with it that illustrates the um, the overlap, so you click in the part which says Embase, and you just click on that, go back up, and apply it, and um, now I'm down to 4,000. And then you can limit it further. You know, you've got um, several different um, uh, filters you can add here. So you can add, uh, you know, um, study types, um, age groups, if you're interested in all kinds of things. All right. <laughs>
All right. Any questions about uh, about InBanks or anything? Sorry, Linda. I'm trying to, pay, trying to pay attention to you here. Let's see. Linda is asking, you may have stated this, but does InBase primarily, uh, what does InBase primarily house? Um, yeah, yeah, Embase is, is a biomedical, another biomedical literature database. It's, it's um, similar to PubMed, but it's, um, um, but it's uh, a different, um, it focuses more on the European literature and other literature outside of the United States, where PubMed, PubMed does too, but it doesn't quite have the coverage. And the combining feature in um, PubMed is basically just using the AND operator, unfortunately. You know, you just, in the, in the advanced search builder, you, um, as I showed you, you use those, uh, you, um, you combine your concepts, you, um, adding to the, adding your, your search strings to the search builder and using those Boolean operators over on the left. That was another question she had about the, um, the combining feature in Embase, if, if it was, there was a similar feature in PubMed. They don't make it quite as easy in PubMed. Okay. There are a lot of other good features in, in Embase, uh, um, but I uh, don't really have time to go over them right now, but, um, but it's a really good resource to use for you. Yes, ma'am. If you were trying to save your search strategies mm -hmm. across several different databases mm -hmm. um, and you need to do it very carefully because mm -hmm. you're doing a systematic yeah. review, for example, is there a way to download the strategies? Um, are, they, uh, are there common data elements where you can then save them in one like spreadsheet, for example, where yeah. you're going to document yeah. like time of search <coughs> and then all the strategies? Yeah, we do that. Um, uh, we do that a lot, actually. Um, usually, I just use like an Excel spreadsheet, and like in in PubMed, what I could do is like um, oh, I'm still in PubMed Central here. Sorry. If I went if I went to PubMed, I would just go to my um, I would just go to my history here and just like copy that oh, okay. into the into the. Um, uh, copy and paste it into the um, spreadsheet. Now, Embase is a little more tricky. What I usually do with it is like I'll, I'll take this, um, I'll go into the history here, because it's not, you know, it, it has this kind of like building iterative search history here. So what I do is I'll click on the link with the, with the, the, the final results in the history and the uh, search strategy. And what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll email it to myself. And then it'll give you that the the exact search string in the email, and then you just copy and paste that into your your spreadsheet. So it's different for different databases. So you really have to do some cutting and pasting, so, yeah. but it's better than entering it. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I just um, yeah, I just do it. I just, it helps me to um, avoid mistakes that way too. Great, thank you. I'm sorry. Did, did you have another question? Or? No, I was just going to ask about the download because mm -hmm. a, a couple of um, a number of the databases have you can download the mm -hmm. search, but I, I'm never sure that I'm capturing exactly what yeah. you did in the downloads. Um, it sounds like you actually cut and paste from what you can see you did. That's yeah, that's what I make sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I still save the search strategies in you know in my account, so I can go back right. to it. Right. But but yeah, for for purposes of reporting and making sure that others can reproduce what you're doing, I find this is better to do. It's more transparent. Good. Okay. So that, you know, that might be important too for people who are in training and then uh -huh. they are saving exactly what they did and the type of questions for a librarian, for example, you can go yeah, back absolutely. And yeah. show you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But have you have you ever found mistakes from like downloading a file and then importing it into uh, from the, from the save strategies, I mean, theoretically, could, if you trusted it, could, I mean, is there a reason not to trust it, uh, to trust the files that they, that they send you? Well, I mean. Had it been flawed in the past, I guess. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not unheard of for there to be mistakes, but okay. you know, it does, doesn't happen often. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I, yeah, I trust it. 
Yeah. But I, I'm really um, what I'm what I'm addressing really is the thing of of um, you know when you're reporting when you're especially when you're doing a systematic review you know you have to um, you have to keep careful track of your methods and stuff so you, what you want to do is make sure that you're um, when you're reporting your methods you have this search strategy you know exactly as it's you know <laughs> as you did it and it's able for other people to reproduce it right so that's what I'm focusing on yeah so long as your whatever method you come up with yeah. is clear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Anybody else? Well, you know, again, um, if, if y'all have need help with anything, please call me or anybody else at the libraries. We're glad to help you. Uh, we're glad to sit down with you and talk to you about your research and what you're doing. And um, um, we can help you with your searches, whatever you need. Okay? If you have trouble accessing anything. Again, in this period of transition with the movement to a different platform and stuff, there may be some issues getting access to some of the resources while we're in this transition. So, you know, give us a heads up if you're having trouble, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Huh? Oh, well. <laughs> Jill says hello. <laughs> Thank you.